Good. Hello and welcome. Uh, and a very good morning, I guess, because we are on a hacker conference, so it's still morning. Um, yeah, we are here for the talk Social Anxiety, um, and, and yeah, public speaking with Social Anxiety. Um, yeah, the talk will be in English, obviously, because I'm speaking English. And <laughs> we, we still ha seem to have some <laughs> technical difficulties with like outside air. Um, yeah. So, but without further ado, um, this furry unicorn will tell you something about uh, public speaking. Um, with social anxiety, having um, like eight talks um, under her hood, and um, yeah, with uh, social anxiety. So, without further ado, a warm welcome for this furry unicorn. Yes, uh, thank you very much, and thank you all for joining me today. Um, to listen to me babble on about uh, social anxiety. Uh, first of all, let's start with some content warnings. Uh, this talk will contain discussion of mental health topics such as bull bullying, oh, as well as mentioned as bullying, of bullying, uh, anxiety and depression. All of that, generally, I am in a good place now, so that's a happy end, I guess. Um, so then, uh, with that out of the way, Let's just go over some meta stuff. Um, who am I? Uh, yeah, I'm some nerd in their mid-twenties who works in tech and just enjoys info dumping about stuff. I'm not what you would call mentally healthy. That's just an excerpt of my diagnosis. Um, <laughs> but uh, despite or maybe because of that, I, I would actually call myself pretty successful in what I do and in my life. I keep holding talks that people seem to enjoy watching. Um, I have partners and friends who I just love very deeply, uh, dearly, and uh, with work stuff, like because anxiety also definitely impacts that. Uh, when I did an apprenticeship, I was able to complete it in 2.5 instead of three years. I was able to become a senior developer at age 23 and basically a product owner at age 24. So, yay for me. <laughs> Um, why this talk? Why did I want to do this? Uh, first of all, obviously inspire more people like me to hold talks, uh, give tips to newcomers so they might have an easier time getting into it, give reasons why someone might want to do this, even though it's not necessarily easy for them, hold the talk uh, that would have helped me, basically, if I had seen it 10 years ago, because like, I would have loved to get started on this earlier. Uh, and overall, just have fun as well. So first of all, why am I messed up? I actually wasn't always anxious. So as a kid, I was like, I, I would always da dance and sing in public. And at some point, I switched schools, and I was taught that was a bad idea the very hard way. Um, like very shitty comments and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I, I learned to hide myself. Um, and but, but the instinct of wanting to put myself out there never fully went away. But I just basically pushed that away, that part of me. And I also started being extremely self-deprecating to preempt shit bullies might say, because like if I say it first, it might hurt less. Yeah, stuff I did. But I did manage to become slightly less messed up. Well, my slide is also messed up, <laughs> um, but that is intentional. <laughs> if you've seen my other talks, you know why. So first of all, I, I was very privileged to be able to do those things. I understand not everyone is, um, but yeah, I luckily was able to do this. I was able to have therapy for a while. Uh, these days I'm on antidepressants, uh, antidepressants and ADHD meds, which are also extremely helpful. Definitely being the person I am, so coming out of uh, coming out as trans and just only spending time with people who treat me as who I am is especially important. I got out of some shitty situations. Uh, yeah, and another thing is just lots and lots of introspection, which is an ongoing process, obviously. Uh, another thing, I am very much still doing is learning to ask for help. Uh, and like, yeah, I did that recently, and yeah, it was a bit. 
Uh, I also became really good at the thing that pays my bills, which is like the tech stuff, which uh, has definitely helped me become more stable and more, more believe more in myself. And also a healthy dose of, dose of playful boastfulness, because like just with self-deprecation, if you pretend uh, that you're the best person out there, you start to believe a bit of it. So I never thought I was the worst person out there, even though I was saying that. I also don't believe I'm the best person out of there, but yeah, playful boastfulness, really good thing to start doing at some point. And just every time you get the urge to be self-deprecating, just do the exact opposite. <laughs> so why do I keep doing this? And maybe why should you? Um, first of all, uh, last week I was doing really badly and I just uh, asked on Fetty if I have had a positive impact on other people, just to kind of be reminded that I am good for others. <laughs> and like multiple people came out to say, your talks have really helped me, which was amazing. And yeah, that's the best reason to do this. I also just like teaching people about topics that I'm passionate about, like web accessibility, which was my first large talk. Um, and also info dumping, which is a separate thing because I may not be passionate about everything that I know too much about. <laughs> and I can still have fun <laughs> talking about things that don't actually matter all that much. I also really like contributing to these awesome events. I'm generally not able to do too many uh, of the angel or troll shifts, uh, which I always feel a bit bad about. But I think if I contribute to the programming by holding talks, I'm at least doing something to make these events as great as they are. Another thing uh, for me, pr uh, practicing my English skills. Up until very recently, I was writing English every day, but I was not speaking it. Um, I recently got like the very best reason one can have to speak English regularly, but uh, yeah, uh, up until that, I did not speak English recently uh, too often. And yeah, that was a nice chance for me, but also holding talks in one's native language is better uh, if one does not feel confident enough in their English skills. And yeah. Um, another thing, like I'm not actually introverted, or not too introverted, but I absolutely suck at starting conversations. So if I'm holding a talk, I can always say like, yeah, you can come to me and talk about this more if you want to, and I give people a reason to start a conversation with me which is really, really helpful. Another thing, learning about interesting topics, like maybe there's a thing that I want to learn about that I don't know how to motivate myself. If I've got a talk for a conference about that thing, I will have a deadline and I will be able to get myself to learn. And teaching other people is also one of the best ways to actually learn something, at least for me it is. And uh, one thing I noticed is also speaking uninterrupted and only having to answer questions afterwards is really great. If you're one of those people who often get talked over, especially in work meetings and stuff, this will not happen here. And that, is, that can really help you boost your confidence. So uh, enough about the me and meta stuff and stuff like, Let's get into some tips and tricks that you might be able to follow to hold talks and feel better about yourself while doing so. Um, first of all, don't forget your meds at home. <laughs> I did that last year and ended up having to take twice my usual amount of antidepressants, which was not great. Um, another thing which you may or may not know about is PowerPoint karaoke. It's a thing at many events. Um, there you get a slide deck which you have not seen before and you have to basically make up stuff as you go along. And yeah, you, you don't want to be educational with that, you just want to be funny and entertain people. And yeah, it allows you for practice, uh, to practice in a very, very safe environment. The worst thing that can happen is not being funny. So yeah, it also is kind of like a bit of a practice for when you blank during a presentation, because blanking during PowerPoint karaoke is kind of the point. So, yeah. Uh, and it's extremely fun. Also, just watching it is fun. Like, uh, I certainly didn't get a chance to take part at this event, but uh, I was watching it, and it was really great. Um, 
one thing why PowerPoint karaoke is great, I would not actually recommend you take part in lightning talks if they are planned like they were at this event. Uh, if you can register beforehand with your talk and get a slot, that's good. But the way it was done here was that um, people were just uh, giving a sign and saying, yeah, I want to hold this talk, and then they uh, let the people decide by clapping who would get a chance to do their talk, which, um, yeah, I don't really get why that was a thing, because A, if we hadn't wasted all that time on clapping, we would have gotten to all talks, and also it's like really unnecessarily cruel. If your talk gets rejected by some committee or by a group of people in private who read the description and stuff, and for whatever reason they reject it, that's one thing. But if you get public hu publicly humiliated uh, in a way that is recorded, yeah, I don't wish that on anyone. So yeah, um, if there are lightning talks which you can register beforehand, do that. That was my first conference talk, actually at GPN 19, and it was really fun. But if it's like spontaneous, like it was here, don't don't bother. Um, yeah, another thing you might be able to see: I almost exclusively wear black. Uh, that has a reason. Um, actually, nobody really cares how much you're sweating, but people being able to see how much you are sweating will make you more anxious. At least it will make me more anxious. And dark clothing hide that, hides that. And also remember, like the people listening here are just like you. Uh, this is not some school or work presentation which will be graded or negatively impact your career or anything. So, yeah, we are like like-minded people generally here, and that is very good. And if you think you're not good enough to speak in an, at an event, you are definitely good enough to submit a talk. Your talk will only be accepted if they think it's interesting, and if you were able to come up with an interesting proposition, you are definitely good enough. The inverse is not true. If you get rejected, that does not mean you're not good enough. There are many reasons why a talk might get rejected. Um, which takes me directly to my next thing. Try not to take rejections personally. Um, this might seem impossible, like most of our, us probably understand rejection, sensitive dysphoria and stuff. Um, but conferences just get so many submissions, they can't accept every good one. And try to speak at small events first. Large events naturally get way more proposals, and they might also pre uh, prefer to have people speaking who have more experience at this. Um, like my first submission for a non-lightning talk was also at the last in-person congress, and yeah, it got rejected. It felt bad at the time, but I understand, and it's, it's okay. One thing that's also really great if it's a thing in your city is uh, regular talk nights at hack spaces. So some do that like once a month for a couple of weeks where um, people just get time to hold a talk in front of their regular hack space audience. And that's a small group and they will generally accept everything because they don't have too many submissions. It's a really good place to get your first speaking experience. Um, one thing. Uh, that I generally try to do is putting jokes on slides. This slide deck is actually pretty, pretty short on jokes, but usually I try to do that. Uh, with jokes, a bit of self-deprecation is okay, but never overdo it with that. Like, um, overdoing it with self-deprecation self will lead to you believing the shit you're saying, and also it can get very annoying. I don't want people I like to be talked about badly, and that includes them talking badly about themselves. I don't like that, and other people don't like that either. Um, one thing I'm definitely struggling with, even right now you're probably no noticing, uh, is the speed in which you're talking. Speak about half as fast as you think is good, you will probably still be too fast. Um, one thing to slow you down is taking a breath between slides. Don't rush through them. You could also take a sip from a drink, every couple of slides. This allows the content to sink in and it slows down your talking. Um, drinking, not a thing if you decide to wear a mask during your talk, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you don't, that is very helpful. And also don't apologize if you mess up, unless you mess up and up hurting someone. If you hurt someone, obviously apologize. But otherwise, people don't care if your talk was a couple of minutes short or if you mispronounce a word or something like that, or if you forgot a point. They don't really care, and you only 
push their attention to that if you apologize. Um, so try to avoid that. Um, so, uh, so now I've gone through some things that I find especially important for people who suffer from anxiety. But also there are tricks for people who don't or for just about any, anyone. Just some things that I picked up over the years of preparing talks and watching many different talks. Um, like font size never below 20 points. Uh, you should generally use a sans serif font. Uh, that's because people with dyslexia will have issues reading your text if it's with serif. Um, don't put pure black text on a pure white ba background. Like you can do it, obviously, but just putting a little gradient line like I did here at the bottom of my slides just makes it seem more rounded. Um, also, you can, uh, if you don't put these lines at the very bottom, like I did here, you can put them a bit above, and you can also put one uh, on top, which kind of boxes your presentation in and makes it less likely that you're able to, uh, that you will overfill your slides. That's also very helpful, unless you go over those lines, which w would end up looking awful. Um, but yeah, it's a neat little thing you can do. Um, also, one thing I don't always remember to do, but I definitely should, uh, check the contrast between font color and background. Uh, there's the well-known WCAG AA or AAA standard. The AAA standard for, uh, for colors doesn't give you many choices, and the AA is not strict enough, basically, and it allows for some very diff difficult to read things. Um, there's the newer thing, which is called Accessible or Advanced. I don't know which is the canonical one. Uh, perceptual color algorithm, uh, which, which like, um, yeah, it does not allow some things that uh, WCIG AA does, but it does allow some things that AAA does not. And yeah, it's, it's a good algorithm, and you can uh, just find online tools to check your contrasts. Um, also, use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. We're not at some school with outdated projectors, usually, and it just looks better in 16 by 9. You can also get, along with, uh, get away with longer lines without your slides seeming crowded on 16 by 9. Generally, if you're speaking at a CCC event, they tend to prefer a darker color scheme because most of the designs are dark and uh, it can get blinding to switch between stuff. I did not know this, even though it seemed obvious until I had someone kind of round at me for that, <laughs> but like, no hard feelings, I totally understand it. I just thought, yeah, I should put it in here. And, um, but style guides also, like, dark color schemes is one thing, there's often style guides for conferences and pre-made uh, themes, which you can use, but they are only a recommendation. Um, they are often released too late, from my experience, because I like to kind of start my talks early, even though I finish them late. Um, and so, yeah, they're only a recommendation. You don't have to use them if you don't like them or if they're not ready yet. Also, don't worry about perfection. Like, I also majorly messed up one talk I held, which is not recorded, not uploaded yet, so I can't actually go back and check how much I messed it up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, nobody said anything bad. I still had interesting conversations with people about the topics I was speaking about. Yeah, it's no real, no big issue. Um, keeping slides light-ish on content is good. There are some people who tell you don't put anything on your slides, like only put some fancy image which is kind of related. I wouldn't do that. It makes it very difficult for people to follow you if they space out for a bit, because then they don't, they're not able to pick back up their, their concentration. And you should just generally always have something to add and uh, uh, don't say the exact words on your slides. Um, speaker notes are also great. Every major software has them. T uh, you should avoid writing down full sentences in there, especially if you're the kind of person who will then just read those sentences out because it will not feel fluid in the moment. Um, many people like to have cards with their uh, talking points on them. Uh, which can give you something to hold on to, which is great because if you're like me and you tend to fidget a bit with your hands, uh, that can 
not look great, but a presenter remote also does this. It also gives you something to hold on to. And you cannot mess up the, the order of your presenter nodes. So you could mess up your, the order of your cards or lose a card or something like that, which would be very stressful in that situation. So I don't actually recommend cards, but maybe it's something for some people. Also, 20 minute presentation, 10 minutes for questions is easier to fill than you think. And even if you do end up coming up a bit short, nobody will actually complain. Um, this is a bit the way I do it, it's, um, but I think it's a very good way to prepare slides. It's just throw stuff on there without any rhyme or reason and then clean it up later because that way you are way less likely to actually forget something you were meaning to say. And yeah, it's just helpful and also if you run out of time you still have slides. If you, if you bike shed too much and you're doing too much um, too much styling too early, you might end up not having anything to present. In this, uh, if you just throw your stuff on there at first, you will have something to present even if it doesn't look awesome. And I think that's better than not having anything at all. Also get comfortable with presenting software. Uh, Microsoft PowerPoint is the market leader, but I do not recommend it. It's not very good in my opinion. Um, Google Slides is pretty good and free. I tend to be able to remember how to actually do things with it. So I don't have to learn it every time I do a new presentation, which is the case with PowerPoint or LibreOffice. Um, Apple Keynote is really, really good. Like, it's my favorite one out there, but only if you, if you have a Mac to present. The web version, which is available, is very, very limited. And it is more limited than you think while you're doing the talk. So. Videos will play in the edit view, but they will not play in the present view. Um, yeah, that's why I uh, took my iPad to last GPN and presented with that, because otherwise my presentations would not have worked at all. But yeah, if you're a Mac user, you can actually just use Keynote, and um, yeah, it's a really good tool. Um, choosing a topic, your topic does not have to be as personal like like mine is right now, you don't have to share anything about yourself actually to, to make an interesting talk. Choose something you're passionate about or just choose some random rabbit hole you fell into. Um, the latter might actually be more entertaining. It might end up making you someone that is forever associated with emoji even if you don't use emoji in your day-to-day -day conversations. <laughs> but honestly, that was very much worth it because I met so many great people through talking about emoji and Unicode stuff and I still enjoy doing it to this day. And I'm also planning some things regarding that as well. Uh, prepare the slides well in advance. I would generally recommend 45 minutes at least before you hold the presentation. Uh, no, I usually try to have my slides in a presentable state the weekend before the conference starts and then I will do some more stuff during the conference and doing the train ride. But none of that stuff that I do is actually necessary for me to feel like I can hold this talk. So. Yeah, the last weekend before the event should be when your talk is in a decent state. And yeah, practice your talk well. That's also something which I don't always remember to do, but it's really important. You don't want to blank and forgot what we were meaning to say. Like, no matter how great your slide deck is, if you forget the additional info you wanted to, to add to that, yeah, it won't work out. Um, one thing I learned last year is to only submit multiple proposals if you're prepared to hold multiple talks. Um, I held three talks at last year's GPN. I did not expect every proposal I sent in to be accepted. I did not expect any of them to be accepted, at, actually. But yeah, they ex ex accepted all of them, which was stressful, but also fun. So in the end, I don't re regret holding any of those talks. But if you are going to put in multiple things you might, uh, multiple proposals, be prepared to also hold all of those talks. And there's always going to be another conference where you can submit your ideas. So you don't have to push them out all at once. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you all for listening. Um, if you want my help, you can reach me at this email address or on Teddy. Um, I may not answer in time. Uh, feel free to ping me, especially emails. I 
sometimes lose my, uh, yeah, I sometimes don't know things that I wanted to replay to, I forget. Feel free to ping me. There's also many more people who are, will be happy to help. This time there, uh, at GPN there was actually a little check mark. I want help preparing my talk in the submission form, which is great. So yeah, you will definitely be able to find someone who helps you and I would be happy to be that person. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, <laughs> for the talk. It was a great talk. Uh, at least I uh, didn't notice that it was about social anxiety. It was more about how to do a talk. Great, and it was a really great talk. Um, any questions from the audience? I mean, okay, then let's start. Okay, the person <laughs> uh, giving you over there. <laughs> So, well, first, thanks for reminding me of all the things I went through as well. Not as bad as you had, but yes, uh, in a way I overcame my anxiety about talking in front of people. In school, in university, it was a nightmare. Uh, so the thing I want to share is, uh, or stress out, is uh, first, really be passionate about what you want to t tell other people. And second, find a friendly environment where you can do your first steps and you know it will be good, even if it's not that good. So in my case, I was happy to have some colleagues and we start doing internal presentations. So it was like 10 people and I knew them, they were friendly and all the time they started discussing right in the middle. So one of the lessons learned for me is you do not need to get through your presentation just the way you wanted to have, make it happen. It was like we started discussing things that were prepared flies, five slides later and just let it run and realized, okay, yeah, we already had that, that's fine. Uh, so that really helped me get around it. And the other point I wanted to share is about making jokes. I realized it's really not good to place a joke in the very first sentence. It's an icebreaker especially for myself, getting over the nervous, being nervous, and for the people to say, yeah. we just want to have some fun. It's not an exam right here. So that's what I want to share. Thank you. Then let me quickly run over. <laughs> Sharing a thing. Well, thanks a lot for the amazing talk. Sharing a thing about myself, I get into another type of persona when a microphone is before my nose. I don't know why, but it changes me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, even when I practiced yesterday, I was talking in a very different accent. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, the second thing, um, as a um, herald on some conferences, I would like to recommend getting in contact with us way early, so we can uh, offer either help or um, discuss things or likes you have, whether you like questions in between or only at the end or question, no questions at all, the Herod is there to help you. Yes, thank you for that. As, as a Herald, I mean, that's my first heralding here, so, uh, but yeah, we are here to help and it's our job to make anything you don't like happen, so. <laughs> uh, how do you deal with feedback? More specifically, how do you not uh, downplay positive feedback and not um, catastrophize negative feedback? But I do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's a very difficult thing to be able to do. Um, like, you can have 20 people tell you you were amazing and one pe person tell you your shit and then that one person is the only thing you remember. Um, generally, I, I think reaching out to other people, uh, like I did, for example, last week where I was saying, did I ever do anything helpful for your life or something? Uh, that was very, very good for, for that. So, yeah, especially asking for positive feedback is very helpful. Okay, 
given. Can you hand in the, the microphone? Thanks. Um, do you have any advice on uh, keeping your talk uh, short enough to fit in time? Because especially when I deliver talks at some pop cultural conventions where everyone is free to comment and uh, ask questions uh, during the presentation, uh, I have no idea how to estimate uh, the time it would, <laughs> it would take and then, uh, then I end up not finishing. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I would recommend not taking questions during, if you can, because that just throws your plans out of the way and you cannot plan your time uh, too well. So for keeping it short, I generally uh, try to have one slide per minute of presentation plus questions. So I generally don't need a minute for one slide, uh, but like this is 30 minutes a 30 minute slot and I had 23 slides this time, which kind of works out, at least for the speed, uh, speed in which I'm speaking and for the amount of stuff I put on my slides. Okay, one last comment. Um, if the person, okay. Then, looking at the time, we are um, after the questions. Um, I think the people can reach out to you and maybe yeah. reach you at the event still. Yes. Um, so yeah, just ask. And yeah, a warm applause and thank you.